Well, the disaster known as the Jeremy Pruitt era has now completely come to an end uh, at Tennessee with the NCAA today releasing their uh, findings, final report, and uh, list of punishments for Tennessee following the Jeremy Pruitt uh scandal at Tennessee, whatever you want to call it. And, and you know, I'm, am I surprised? No. Um, am I, do I think it's fair or unfair? I just, you know, I, it's hard really to say. You always want to compare what, what happened or, or, or the punishments that Tennessee is getting to maybe what happened at some other schools. But I guess, first of all, if you don't know, to Tennessee, uh, they're losing 25 scholarships over a five-year period. Uh, some of that was self-imposed and has already begun. Uh, they're fined $8 million, uh, and uh, they're on probation for five years. So could it have been worse? Yeah, it could have been worse. They could have potentially received some type of bowl ban or something like that. Um, uh, but that didn't happen. Um, according to the report, the way they settled on the figure of $8 million as far as the fine that Tennessee received is that that's what they figure... Tennessee will make or would make from a 2023 bowl appearance and 2024 bowl appearance. So, you know, basically saying you make about $4 million for playing in a bowl game. So, so they're going to let Tennessee play in the bowl game, just find them that amount of money. That's, that's what the, you know, the, what the NCAA put out. And Jeremy Pruitt slapped with a six year show cause, which is a long show cause. And not only that, Whenever he's hired, whether it's during the show cause or after, the first year of his employment with whoever team hires him, that first year, he's suspended for the entire first year. I don't know if we'll ever see Jeremy Pruitt get hired again. And that's more to the point of this video. Uh, Alabama was really the one that was punished here, which is funny for a lot of different reasons, I guess. But... Uh, I haven't heard from too many Tennessee fans today that seem upset or mad about anything that they got. I've heard from some other fan bases that, you know, Tennessee should have got uh, maybe a little bit uh, a tougher punishment or something like that. Well, we've got to realize and understand that the days of the NCAA controlling college football is pretty much over, at least as, we, as it used to be. And Probably in my lifetime, and I'm 45, the NCAA is going to be completely withdrawn from big-time college football together. I think we're seeing the, the end days of the NCAA as a, as a controlling body over major college football. So I'm not surprised at all um, that, that uh, it's sort of a slap on the wrist is how this has been described for Tennessee. Now, losing scholarships does hurt. I mean, look, nobody wants to lose scholarships. If you ask these coaches, they'd rather, you know, they'd take 100 scholarships so they could get them. You know, there's an 85 scholarship limit, and you'd only sign a certain number of players a year based on how many players you've signed over the last four years and how many transfers you have and different things like that. But so Tennessee is going to have to reduce their scholarship totals by a total of 25 over um, over a, a four or five year period, whatever it is. So, I mean, that's that's not something that will help Tennessee. It's definitely not something that will help them. Um, and, and we'll see what, what, if any, impact that actually has on them. But I think the most important thing to take away from this, if you're a Tennessee fan, is that this, it's just finally over. It's no longer hanging over the program's head, right? This is no longer something that maybe can be used to negatively recruit against Tennessee. And, and let's face it, Recruiting is a cutthroat business, right? So you know if you're a school that's competing to get a kid and Tennessee is also competing to get that kid, of course you're going to tell that kid, look, if you go to Tennessee, you may end up with a postseason bowl ban. Well, that, you know, that they can no longer say that. So the best, I think the best thing to come out of this for Tennessee is just that it's over, right? It, you no longer have to deal with it, right? It's just completely over. Um, <laughs> but what's the Alabama man saying now about Kevin Steele and Jerry Pruitt? Let's go back in time. To last season, Alabama, of course, crying because they don't like their defensive coordinator, which I don't blame you. Look, you give up half a hundred to Tennessee, you got issues. You got some serious problems. Uh, so they all, you know, they can't blame Nick Saban because they lick his boots. So they blame the defensive coordinator to get rid of him. And then they bring in this dinosaur, Kevin Steele. The guy's 90-something years old, right? This Kevin Steele. The guy's been coaching longer than I've been alive. And like I said, I'm 45. Uh, they bring him in. And what does the Alabama fan tell you? Temporary Lou? This is temporary Lou? Nick Saban's bringing Jeremy Pruitt back to the fold. Jeremy Pruitt is going to be the next uh, Alabama defensive coordinator. Kevin Steele is just a one-year deal. Just a, It's just a stopgap to get us from point A 
to point B. He'll be gone. We're bringing in Jeremy Pruitt. And he's a defensive mastermind, woo. Which I agree with. Jeremy Pruitt's a hell of a defensive mind. I mean, look, there are lots of co head coaches who have fallen on their face. Doesn't mean they're not good at what they did before. Will Muschamp, not a good head coach. Great defensive mind. Uh, Dan Mullen, not a good ho uh, head coach. Great offensive mind. I mean, there's a long list of great coordinators who don't work out as coaches. So, and Jeremy Pruitt's on that list. He's a hell of a defensive mind. There's no doubt about it. He's been time at Georgia. Uh, when Mark Rick was a defensive coordinator for a year or two, uh, when Mark Rick was there, he's, he's a great defensive coordinator. And the Alabama man had it all mapped out, didn't they? We're going to get rid of Pete Golding. He's the problem. We're going to run him out of town. Can't get Pruitt right now. Can't get him right now because the NCAA is still investigating what went on at Tennessee. But as soon as that wraps up, Lou, we're bringing in Jeremy Pruitt. And guess what? Alabama's defense is going to return to glory. That's right. The best defenses we have were in Pruitt were there, which is a lie. That was a Kirby Smart defense. If you haven't figured out by now that 60, 70, 75% of uh, Alabama's defensive success over the last 15 years was because of Kirby Smart, I don't, know, I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, but Jeremy Pruitt is a good defensive mind, though. Six-year show cause order, though, for Jeremy Pruitt. What's Alabama's plan now? You going to keep Kevin Stilley? He dies? I mean, I don't know. The guy's 90-something years old. Like I said, you're not bringing Jeremy Pruitt in. Nick Saban's not bringing in Jeremy Pruitt when he's got a six-year show cause order. And on top of that, if you hire him, he's suspended for the first year that you hire him anyway. This is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. You know the Tennessee and Alabama is a huge rival. The Tennessee fans and the Alabama fans go back and forth year-round. Even over the last 15 years, where until this last season, Alabama just completely owned them, winning every single year. It's still one of the biggest rivalry games in college football. I wouldn't put it with Ohio State or Michigan. I wouldn't put it with Alabama-Auburn. I wouldn't put it with Georgia-Florida. I wouldn't even put it with Oklahoma-Texas. But it's in that next tier of rivalry games, Tennessee and Bama. Huge rivalry game. Uh, Tennessee, man. This is something you could use to your advantage when arguing with the gump. They wanted your throwaway trash head coach, Jeremy Pruitt, in the gump mind. They had it all worked out. Uh, Kevin Steele was going to come back for this one year, and then Jeremy Pruitt was going to ride in on a white horse, escorted by Nick Saban, and he was going to save the day. He was going to bring the Alabama defense back to prominence. And Tennessee said... Not so fast, my friend. Tennessee just completely throws Jeremy Pruitt under the bus. Not only that, they throw his friggin' wife under the bus, too. Wow, Tennessee out here ratting out head coaches' wives. Yeah, Casey Pruitt, guilty as charged, according to the NCAA. Jeremy Pruitt and Casey Pruitt, over 200 recruiting violations in like a two-year period at Tennessee. Saban didn't care about any of that. We want to bring Pruitt in anyway, save the defense. But Tennessee goes, ah, ah. we're going to tell the NCAA literally every single thing that Jeremy Pruitt did. We're going to paint him out to be as bad as possible. And the NCAA buys it. They slap Jer uh, Jerome Pruitt with a six-year show cause order. And even if you hire him, he's suspended for the first full year. This is great. If you don't know what a show cause order is, it means if you want to hire Jeremy Pruitt, you have to go to the NCAA and explain to them why it is you want to hire this cheating degenerate. And you have to get permission then from the NCAA. To even, can you imagine Nick Saban sitting down at the table in the NCAA offices in Indianapolis and begging the end, please let me hire Jeremy Pruitt, Mr. NCAA man. Please let me hire him. NCAA goes, you know, even if we let you hire him, he's suspended for the full first year. Dummy, Nick Saban's like, no, I actually I didn't know that. The Jello's drooling down his chin. This is hilarious. The NCAA hands down their findings on the Tennessee cheating scandal. And the biggest victim of all, Alabama. <laughs>